thank you very much. And it's good to see you all. Hope you had a great weekend at your convention. And we're going to have a great convention coming up, and I look forward to it. It seems as if the Democrats no longer view the government's job as protecting honest citizens from criminals, but rather protecting criminals from honest citizens. Not a single person in the out-of-control mob you saw at our house was charged with a crime. But you know who was? We were. They've actually charged us with felonies for daring to defend our home. God bless you. God bless the president. And, and God, God bless, bless the United, United States. States. That was the McClaskeys. I'm here to help us digest some of the um, uh, blatantly false things they had to say there. <laughs> that was the McClaskeys. That was the McClaskeys. Uh, McClaskeys. was the McClaskeys. Mark and Patricia McCloskey. The McCloskeys. was the McCloskeys. Uh, McCloskeys. McCloskeys. I'm here to help us digest some of the um, uh, blatantly false things they had to say there is our friend Claire McCaskill, who also hails from the great state of Missouri. Claire, what'd you think? I really don't know where to start, but let me start with the law. In Missouri, you can sit on your front porch with a gun and watch a parade off your porch, and you go down and start waving the gun and pointing it to people at people in the parade. That's called brandishing. Now, substitute peaceful protesters walking in the street for a parade, and the same law applies. Nobody knows the laws of Missouri better than you. Under the Castle Doctrine, they had the right to do exactly what they did. What's going on? Let's just review the facts. They're on their own property. They were carrying lawful firearms that they lawfully possessed, and there were trespassers who had broken down a gate and were coming onto their property. And the couple said, get off our property. I mean, don't, don't hurt us. Get off of our area. And they had every right to do that. This prosecutor is totally out of control. This is really, this is an abuse of power. You want to know what an abuse of power looks like? This is a textbook example. And that's why, Steve, I think the United States Department of Justice needs to open a civil rights investigation into the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office. So the jury's question will be, was their fear reasonable? And, uh, you know, the facts are in dispute, but we do know this. We know that they brought the guns out and the people were not on their property. They were in the street and on the sidewalks. McCloskey says he and his wife called 911. And it was the McCloskeys. I'm here to help us digest some blatantly false things they had to say there. McCloskeys grabbed their guns as they heard the crowd approaching from afar. Video from another angle shows protesters chanting while walking into their private gated community, which appears to be open. But McCloskey says the key is required and later shared these photos of the gate. We know that this is not a private street because you can drive in on these streets anytime you want. The fact that they broke this gate down to this private property, to this gated community in the first place, if it's a peaceful protest, they're not breaking down gates and marching through private neighborhoods. A large group entered private property. The McCloskeys came out with guns to defend their property. That's really the gist of the news. The protesters or rioters or whatever you want to call this group, because they did enter private property, they did break the gate. The McCloskeys argue they were being threatened. And according to police, in fact, it would seem there was one armed individual, another person wearing a bullet resistant vest. Um, and so it is really, um, and the other thing you should know about these people, they've sued everyone, everyone and their brother for their entire legal careers, their neighbors, uh, their employers, their tenants. They even destroyed a beehive of the Jewish children at the Jewish temple next door because it was they thought it was too close to their property. Took an ax out. These children had a beehive so they could make honey for Rosh Hashanah. That's the kind of guys these folks are. Uh, McCloskey, by the way, currently has open cases whereby he is defending black people that have been assaulted. In addition, they own thousands of dollars of back taxes. In addition, they own thousands of dollars of back taxes. 
The McCloskeys have failed to pay their 2019 taxes on their office building on Lindell Boulevard. The attorney for the McCloskeys tells us it's not uncommon to be behind on the assessment of real estate. So that's the McCloskeys. Claire, can I just ask you, is there a distance between what they just explained about their case and what their lawyers have maintained in court about their case? Well, they really haven't been to court, and the prosecutors already offered them diversion. I'm really surprised that charges have been filed um, that are you know, contrary to Missouri law. A report obtained by News 4 has legal analysts like Christy Flint casting serious doubt on the evidence against the McCloskeys. They know that they can't prove the case. At issue, to convict them of exhibiting a weapon as charged, prosecutors have to prove in part the guns were readily capable of lethal use. The document sent to News 4 anonymously appears to be a firearms analysis. The gun Patricia McCloskey had, a small handgun, examiners say, could not be test fired as submitted. At the request of prosecutor Chris Hinckley, the report says, the firearm was stripped and found to have been assembled incorrectly. It was then reassembled properly test fired and functioned as designed. It is very shocking to me. Flint says the report sheds an important light on what prosecutors knew when filing the charge. Given what we know at this point that the gun was originally inoperable and um, the you know prosecutor knew that, uh, I, I, I think we've got big problems there. Mm. Saying that if they would just acknowledge they brandished the gun when they were not in reasonable fear. Um, you know, were they in reasonable fear because there were a lot of black people walking down their street? Who is protecting my wife, my home, my hearth, my livelihood. I was a victim of a mob that came through the gate. I didn't care what color they were. I didn't care what their motivation was. I was frightened, I was assaulted, and I was in imminent fear that they would run me over, kill me, burn my house and you have to have this in the context of St. Louis where on June the 2nd of this year I watched the city burn. I watched the 7-Eleven get smashed in, looted and burned for 40 minutes on live television with nobody showing up to do anything. When they were not in reasonable fear, um, you know, were they in reasonable fear because there were a lot of black people walking down their street? And when those people came through the gate, when it was a mob, I didn't take the time to see their, their birth certificates or anything else. I was defending my, my house, my life, my wife, and what I've spent 32 years building there. They know the mayor lives in their neighborhood. It was all over the news that these, this group was gonna be protesting the mayor. No single media outlet has ever mentioned the complete falsity of that statement. The mayor's house cannot be reached through my neighborhood. Lyda Cruson lives up on a road called Lake and Washington. That's three blocks north and a half a mile west of my house. So this wasn't as if this was a big surprise that these protesters were in their neighborhood. So the issue really is, can, will a jury agree, if they decide to contest this, will a jury agree that they were in reasonable fear from peaceful protesters walking down the street? At the time, I didn't have any time to think about this. However, the leader of the entity called Expect Us that organized this, whatever it was, announced ahead of time that he does not want to have a peaceful protest. He wants to have it be as disruptive as possible. And when interviewed subsequently, he said, I know it was illegal. I know it was a private neighborhood. But when you're doing protests of this nature, it's necessary to break the law to get your ends met. We'll be coming back to you over the course of the evening. Again, we are um, not trying to do, you know, live analysis as this is rolling out, but we do feel a responsibility to make sure that we are not unquestioningly broadcasting things that are both, um, that are false, that are deliberately false, and that are potentially dangerously false. Bullshit! Um, to that end, uh, we also want to bring in our colleague, Tremaine Lee. Uh, Tremaine, I wanted to ask you about a claim that we just heard, um, again, from Mark and Patty McCloskey. Um, they want to, about Democrats, they are not satisfied with spreading the chaos and violence into our communities. They want to abolish the suburbs altogether. Um, the They're not satisfied with spreading the chaos and violence into our communities. They want to abolish the suburbs altogether. They're, They're not, not satisfied, satisfied with, spreading with spreading the chaos, the chaos and, violence and violence into our communities. Into our communities. They want, they to, want abolish to abolish the suburbs, the suburbs altogether. altogether. By ending um, single-family home zoning. 
This forest rezoning would bring crime, lawlessness, and low-quality apartments into now-thriving suburban neighborhoods. President Trump smartly ended this government overreach, but Joe Biden wants to bring it back. The Circle idea that the too. Democratic Party wants to abolish the suburbs, what is the accusation there that they're actually making? And so as the McCloskeys uh, mentioned, they said Donald Trump had repealed laws uh, that would allow multifamily dwellings in the suburbs, which were an effort decades long to try to desegregate the suburbs. Uh, because as we know, like uh, co deed of covenants and all these kind of things that were put in place um, in housing policy to make sure uh, to maintain segregation. So the accusation is that, you know, Joe Biden and the Democrats will come in and once again uh, desegregate the suburbs. And I want to go back to one other thing uh, that the McCloskeys mentioned. Uh, they painted this picture of the Democrats uh, wanting to allow criminal and, you know, ne'er-do-wells to run the streets. They actually benefited from Kim Gardner, the circuit attorney, her reformist policy. And so because they were convicted of a felony, under many other circumstances, they would have been um, ordered to surrender for arrest. But they were now eligible for a diversion program uh, because so many times in, that, in cities like St. Louis and across the country, they say you're a nonviolent first-time offender, you shouldn't do time. Really, Gardner, they're saying, quote, Today, my office filed charges against Mark and Patricia McCloskey following an incident involving peaceful unarmed protesters on June 28th. It is illegal to wave weapons in a threatening manner at those participating in nonviolent protest. And while we are fortunate this situation did not escalate into deadly force, this type of conduct is unacceptable in St. Louis. But experts say Missouri law may actually support the McCloskeys. A lot of people are not familiar with Missouri's castle doctrine, which we have extended to real properties. SLU constitutional and criminal law professor Anders Walker says Missouri's castle doctrine is more robust than other states, meaning people can use deadly force to protect not only their home, but also their land. He says the private Portland place where the McCloskeys live counts. I think that those streets are owned collectively and it's essentially like walking on the private land. And that means, in his view, the protesters who, on a public street, would be practicing their First Amendment rights were the ones breaking the law. So there's actually, one, no right to protest, and then the protesters themselves are trespassing. The circuit attorney has apparently decided that her job as a prosecutor isn't to keep us safe from criminals, but to keep the criminals safe from us. Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt says 36 people arrested Monday night in St. Louis in connection to vandalism and looting have all been released without being charged. He calls Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner's actions shocking. She can charge folks, but the reality is the people who were arrested that night, charges brought to her office, not one of them um, charges were brought. All of them were released back on the street. I find that um, appalling. While the AG continues to fuel the division in the community at a time of great pain, suffering, and racial divide. My response to the AG, I got work to do. It's, it's a bizarre, upside-down world. I've been a little irritated by this process until today. Now I'm just flat-out pissed off. I mean, this, is, this has gotten to be outrageous. Okay, you're the top law enforcement officer and enforcer there in Missouri. Uh, what can you do involving this local prosecutor? She says, listen, there is a law against waving these weapons in, quote, threatening manner. Why'd you get involved? Well, the truth of the matter is this is nothing more than a political prosecution brought by uh, St. Louis prosecutor Kim Gardner. We've got a prosecutor now targeting individuals for exercising uh, their fundamental rights under the under the. Um, uh, under the Second Amendment. And so enough is enough. The law is very clear. It's time uh, as the state's chief law enforcement officer to step in. So we're entering the case and we're seeking to have this case dismissed, um, not just for the McCloskeys, but for every Missourian whose rights are threatened by a rogue prosecutor who seeks to punish people for exercising their fundamental right to self-defense. Many other circumstances, they would have been um, ordered to surrender for arrest. But they were now eligible for a diversion program uh, because so many times in, that, in cities like St. Louis and across the country, they say you're a nonviolent first time offender, you shouldn't do time. All right, Missouri Governor Mike Parson believes the McCloskeys, did, quote, did what they legally should do to protect themselves. So will he pardon the McCloskeys? Governor, good to see you, sir. Thank you for being with us. By the way, you have 22 years in law enforcement. Is that correct, sir? That's right, that's right, Sean, I have. Will you pardon them? With, without a doubt, Sean. I'll do everything within the Constitution of the state of Missouri to protect law-abiding citizens. And those people are exactly that. They're law-abiding citizens.